Okay, good. Let's start. We can mute right. ourselves. Okay. So welcome everybody. Thank you for attending this session called the Station Agent of the Future. Your host today is our Maria Camila Gomez, biologist, working with digital transformation in the Alliance Biodiversity Seat. Daniel Jimenez, agronomist. He also works with the Alliance as one of the leaders of the digital inclusion lever. Darani Burra, data scientist of the United Nations Global Pulse, and me. I am Jose Antonio Arana, and I work in knowledge sharing in the Alliance Biodiversity Seat. We want to invite you to think ahead about the role of the agricultural extension and advisory services in a world that every day becomes more digital, but at the same time, a struggle with challenges that defy the agri, the agri food sector. So in this session, we ask you to explore with us the roadmap of the agronomies of the future, expanding the definition of a station far beyond productivity. For this, we need your participation. We propose you to exchange ideas and build together the profile of the station agent of the future. So feel free to share your thoughts and experiences. I'm going to leave you now with Maria Camila to, to explain us where this session comes from and what will be done with the information collected during it. Thanks again for being here, enjoy. Maria Camila, you're muted. Okay, is everyone hearing me okay? Yes, we okay. can hear you. Perfect, perfect. So, hello, everybody. Um, thank you all for being here. As we want to make this session as participatory as possible, we just ask you guys a few days ago to help us answer just a simple question. And many of you actually did. In fact, we had around six around. So, this information is valuable to us um, as it provided us some input for our building session. So just this session is just the beginning of something that will continue next year. Here we are starting to start a dialogue. So it's a space to take advantage of the attitudes, knowledge, and skills and change of the future could have. So now the main for the main inspiration behind the extension agent of the future actually came from this photograph taken in Colombia. Daniel, can you all see the photograph? Hold on a second. Perfect. Thank you, Daniel. So this is actually the main inspiration behind the extension agent of the future. Um, so this is a photograph taken in Colombia, and this is the case of the National Federation of Coffee Growers, where the extension agent, the extension agent is actually received with gratitude. Um, this extension agent carries a tablet in his hands, as you all can see, and it goes delivering extension services from farm to farm under pandemic situation. And surprisingly, um, this is a form of extension service that still works today. And it's a photograph that for Daniel, Durrani, Jose, and myself brings us a lot of hope and happiness given the COVID-19 situation. So after all, it still represents what extension services means to um, every, every farmer in Colombia. But unfortunately, this isn't the same in all countries. In fact, just re reading a report the other day, one can apparently say that 90% of farmers in tropical countries do not receive technical assistance. And in fact, in Colombia, in the 2016 agricultural census, it showed that about 90% of farmers do not receive technical assistance. And this is very critical because if extension services are really reaching only 10% of farmers, then what are the digital opportunities out there and how do we reach them massively? Um, but of course, I would like to know what Johnny thinks because I know this isn't the case in all geographies. Um, so what do you think, Johnny? I'll pass on the word into you. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, the reality of today's agriculture sector is quite complex, right? It is not only to reach, but also deliver, deliver you know, actionable advisories. Uh, let me give an example of rice farmers from the eastern part of uh, Java in Indonesia. Uh, the last season, farmers had optimal agroclimatic conditions, right? In fact, farmers also procured all of their inputs even before the COVID-19 pandemic regulations began. 
And uh, however, the problems emerged right after the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in, in relation to road closures and, and uh, you know, mobility restrictions. The extension agents went into these villages with traditional on-farm related advisories, but the, uh, the farmers did not need them because of the favorable agroclimatic conditions. What they wanted to know was how would they be able to produce um, uh, and how would they be able to sell their produce in these regulated mobility restrictions and road closures. And the fact is that many extension agents in many instances failed to give a proper answer. And most, in fact, most of the farmers did receive about alternative arrangements from, for sale from various media sources, but most of them, as you and I would know, would only trust and implement if there is someone physically coming and translating this information into uh, actionable and targeted recommendations. So the reality is on-farm productivity is just one aspect of the broader agri-food system. And factors such as uh, climate smart uh, practices, importance of nutrition, post-harvest sale, in addition to high yields are all equally important and fundamental components of these rapidly evolving agriculture systems. So therefore the question we asked previously in the survey and also continue to ask in this session is how will the role of the extension agent evolve especially in the context of digital tools, expanded access to information, and changing priorities of farmers. So with that, I would uh, pass on to, to Daniel. Daniel, what do you think are the potential scenarios? Okay, so first, uh, thanks, uh, Maria Camila and Dorani. And hi, everyone, and welcome to this session on, on the Extension Agent of the Future. So I'm, uh, welcome again. I'm Daniel Jimenez, the leader of the Community of Practice on Data Driven Agronomy. So as Maria Camila said, now um, I'm going to talk about the, the potential scenarios that extension officers are facing today and are likely to face in the future. So I do that by summarizing uh, two scenarios. The, um, two scenar the first will be the role of extension agents during the COVID-19. The second will be the opportunities for the new extension officers in a digital world. And finally, by summarizing the challenges they are facing these days, some of them already pointed out by, by Darani and Maria Camila. So, for, uh, in terms of COVID-19, some agencies have realized that in some regions, the extension agents are at the front line of response to a pandemic in rural, in rural areas, and that they are also key actors to raise awareness about the development of the pandemic, keep the governments informed, but more importantly, to guarantee the food supply was not a risk. I remember the early days of the pandemic. In the country where I, was, where I live currently, one of the most unequal in Latin America, and for a few days, it kind of felt like a walking dead scenario, right? We were scared about food shortage, even watching how our neighbors behaved. And as researchers in agriculture that used to picture an apocalyptic scenario of a world overpopulated, facing climate change, and lacking drinkable water and food, for a moment we realized that the scenario was actually possible, but driven this year by a pandemic as opposed to our PowerPoint presentations. So second, there are many opportunities for extension agents. Based on the digital transformation of our food systems, I've been amazed by the paradigm shift of agronomy and extension as I used to know it. And I truly believe that big data and digital extension is not a replacement of extension agents, but a complementary solution for doing the job much more efficiently. As times are changing, extension methods are also evolving uh, and becoming equipped with the latest technology um, that can help the digital extension services. Just to give you some examples, the use of image process, process, processing algorithms, uh, algorithms trained with tones of images um, that can be used for species recognition, so we can optimize the way how we spray uh, pesticides, images for crop monitoring, algorithms developed to detect, to detect early plant stress, distinguish between a nutrient deficiency and a fungal disease, a smartphone-based diagnosis of pests and diseases, and finally, data mining and big data to support extension officers on what, where, when to grow, and even how, where, how to sell. I mean, many of those things uh, that I was dreaming about when I, when I used to work as an extension agent in a while here in Colombia. And last but not least, the challenges, mostly based on the liter literature review. So what I'm going to share with you, uh, where are we going to share with you is something that we, we haven't built this as a collective, but it's more, it's more from what we found in the, lit, uh, in the lit, in literature. So we understood from the literature that there are some skills, attitudes, and knowledge that should be considered for extension agents according to the current, current and future challenges. Just to give you some examples, 
reports from the CGIR and other organizations have identified that extensionists are not familiar with digital tools. They have limited knowledge on how to interpret data. In some geographies, they are regarded as professionals imposing recommendations rather than facilitating knowledge process exchange. And finally, there's a lack of a clear mandate, a vision beyond uh, sustainable, sustainable crop production, lack of uh, entrepreneurship spirit, and little knowledge on climate change and sustainable food systems. And this is very important for us working in the CGIR as we do research for development. And we can certainly play a key role providing, providing solid science and responsible digital tools and products to be used uh, by our end users. So in a nutshell, extension officers can act as heroes sometimes during the pandemic. They do have a lot of tools to make the work much more efficient. But in order to do that, we need to figure out how to unblock some current and future bottlenecks to make this happen. Now, let's take a look at the results of our Google survey, the, the survey that we shared with you. So I hand over now to Maria Camila, who is going to show them. Thanks, Daniel. Um, so we asked you guys um, if you can go to the future and see how the extension agent actually is and come back to the past. Um, what would you guys consider that, what knowledge, attitudes, and skills would you consider strengthening, right, for that extension agent of the future to have? So we gathered 64 responses this morning, and our first question was, what knowledge would you suggest strengthening? And with 67%, most of you said that analytics, and with 62.5% ICTs. Um, after this, we also have, um, as a suggested knowledge, um, smartphone-based diagnosis of crop pest diseases and artificial intelligence and robotics. What attitudes would you recommend to consider? And we had that it's very important that this extension agent of the future acts as a facilitator of knowledge exchange, um, has a broader vision beyond sustainable crop productivity, and considers inclusivity as the main attitudes that this extension agent of the future should have. And finally, what skills would you ask him or her to require? And we had an immense, um, an immense important into looking into holistic approach towards understanding the, the food system, right? And after this, we had that social communication skills is another key skill that this extension agent of the future should have, along with digital literacy. So having this into mind, Daniel, what do you think about this? Well, first, I think it is fantastic that we have more than 60 responses, right? So, I mean, in terms of knowledge, it seems like uh, ICTs and analytics seem to be like a priority, right, in terms of knowledge. Uh, but those, those both, they, they probably can be in the same category, actually, right? I think analytics could be also part of, of ICTs. So it seems that it, 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 with it was we should emphasize on that in terms of knowledge. That also we need to consider as extension officers in the, uh, for, uh, um, as, a, as, a, as the type of attitude to act more as facilitator of knowledge exchange. Um, and definitely in terms of skills, it seems that um, they do need to be, to have more uh, um, holistic approach, you know, uh, um, uh, in terms of, of extension services and consider, for example, why not the umbrella of food systems? So consider not only um, crop productivity, but also value change, food loss and waste, uh, uh, nutrition, etc. So this is, this is great. Um, so now, now this is the time where we'll, we'll, we'll we'll like, we would love to hear from you, uh, but in this part of the session, um, all of us, we will facilitate an, an exercise where we will read what, what we, are going to take some insights that you will provide uh, on terms of what will be the knowledge, the skills, and the attitudes that the extension officers should have. So, Jose is going to share, Jose is already uh, sharing the screen with us. So you see the sketch there with this potential extension officer in the future, right? So what we're going to do is to use the same statement that we have in the survey. So if we could, if you could travel to future to see the evolution of world's agriculture and return to the past, when you're going to talk to an extensionist, to, to, to an extensionist what, are, what is the knowledge, the attitude and skills that, that this person should consider? So Jose will 
put either sticky notes or icons around the sketch. And we hope that at the end, we can, uh, we, we can have this sketch surrounded by the skills but, that we all can, can build together. So go ahead and write in the chat. We will be uh, building uh, around the sketch. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start hearing from you guys. So let's see what you all have. What do you think are the skills, attitudes, and knowledge that this extension agent of the future should have? You can write it down in the in the webinar chat, um, wherever you prefer. We will be hearing from you. We have 62 attendees. Yeah, we need your res responses, guys. <laughs> okay, we have one from Ana Maria. Knowledge in relation to food systems. Good, good. Okay, we have so more. Reported. Knowledge on climate change, social science, marketing. Kristen Davis says emotional intelligence. This is very important. <laughs> I, agree. I totally agree. Huh? We haven't considered that, but that is so true. That is really I true. Totally agree. Okay, we have more. We're, more are coming. Thank you, guys. Um, skills and conflict resolution. Translate key information that could be easily interpreted by farmers. Not very complex. Oh, one agrees. Holistic approach, yes, but also be able to say it when they don't know and find and help find the right information. Cultural background knowledge, example, for example, traditional cropping, gender, and ecosystem dynamics. I mean, this is looking great, right? I mean, people are providing some insights on, on the particular context, which I think is necessary. I mean, it's necessary to take into account. I mean, like, like conflict solver, like participate in these processes, those are really re related to a specific context, you know, socioeconomic context. So it's great. Listen to this one, Daniel and Durrani. Being able to multitask as the girl in the picture. <laughs> so, so I have a question. That's why, that's why we thought, was that, that's why you thought to put a lady there, right? A multitasker. <laughs> agreed, agreed. So, I mean, also the question is, in, in my mind, I don't know. I mean, we've been trying to figure out the answer too, is, is, does the extension agent need to have all knowledges or do they need to stick to one knowledge but then have access to every other bits of information and pieces? So yeah, please, uh, please comment on that too. Look, I saw one on financial, financial and, and this, is, this is so true, right? Like sometimes when, when, I, when I used to work as a station officer, I remember visiting some farms and they also say that, you know, like in terms of profitability, they say that they, 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 there's no way that it was going to be good, right? But when you, when, you try to, when you talk to those farmers, they don't know how much they do invest, right? So it's like so, so, so important to have that, right? It's just, it, it looks simple for many of us, but it's so necessary. That, that's, that's a great insight. Okay. What, what else is coming in? We have so many, but Daniel, I want to ask you, we can actually let attendees talk. Do you want, if, if someone wants to talk, they can raise their hand and we'll allow them to talk. Do you think that's a good idea? It's a really good idea. It's okay. a really good idea. If someone wants to talk, um, go right ahead. But I'll be, I'll be saying more. Um, open to adopting digital tools trustworthy data and information and communicate them to the right places and right time. Oh, Kristen Davis is going to talk. Okay. Kristen, can you hear us? Unmute. 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 Okay. Hey, Kristen. Happy to see you here. Hi. Hi. Hi Let me just take myself off the other phone. Um, Hi everyone, great to see you here. I just wanted to, to follow up with, with that earlier uh, discussion of having so many skills. There's a great list here, and it would be wonderful if every extension agent, man and woman, had all of these skills and competencies and abilities, but it's just not possible. Um, so what's really important is that person knows how to broker relationships to find the solutions for the farmers and find that expertise that they might not have. Thank you. 
Thanks to you, Christine. Great. Thanks, thanks. Totally thanks, agree. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> but, but, uh, thanks, Christine. But also, it's also important to know, I mean, for all of us, uh, including, you know, us in the, in, in the COP, is that there is already an existing uh, knowledge that is that is present on uh, that is present with the extension agents, right? So we we'll have to we we'll have to build something that is over that ex existing knowledge. Yeah, but at the same time, I we saw in the opening this morning, right? The, the professor from the University of Florida, and she was talking, you know, about the long history in agriculture and the agricultural research for development, and you know, like multidisciplinarity. It's so key, also, right? Like it's it's not that. We are trying to create a super extension agent, like a, the same happened in data science, right? When we're trying to, to, to have this person, the data unicorn, the, the people that can do so many things at the same time. But, but at the end, we realized that we gain more by working as a team, right? With different disciplines that, try, that pretend to have all of, those, all, all of this knowledge. Okay, oh, we have another one. We have another person that wants to talk. Can you hear us? A bit shy. You, Sama, can you hear us? Okay, while well, we have him or her um, into Okay, it's good. We listen. There was an interesting comment from from Andy uh, on you know AI based assistance, and I would like to uh, know people's thoughts on this. Does it always have to be human, or can it be an AI based uh, service? Good. So we listen already to Christine, Andy, both scientists, a lady. <laughs> what about? Uh, is there any extensionist? that can contribute. Any extensionists with us? Okay, we can also write down attitudes or skills. So if anyone um, has any attitudes or skills that they consider um, strengthening for the extension agent of the futures that should have, please write them down. We also would, would love to hear from youth from, um, I mean, why not? Farmers, if they are. Tony, Tony's going to talk. Hi, Tony. Tony? Uh, yes, can you hear me now? Perfect. Hi. Hi. Sorry, it was a bit, a few clicks until I was unmuted. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. It's a very interesting uh, talk and um, I want to come in from a background that I'm not agriculturist, I'm more coming from an economist background, uh, business admin as well. And we started to talk to extension officers in, in Zambia a couple of years ago. And I think the challenge is that they don't even have any knowledge on how to use the internet, how to find information, or even having, uh, if they are too remote, they don't even have access to the network. So there's actually need to build the skill of how to use the, the technology, first of all. Uh, and then you have what you already mentioned, data analysis, depending on the countries that we are in, definitely. And one thing that was also mentioned earlier today in the opening session is we have all these nice solutions uh, we don't need to ideate anything new but we need to make sure that it reaches the extension officers and the farmers so that's what i put in my comment earlier how can we build a repository where we find information from my perspective in a curated way uh, because if you go on to uh, um, any search engine you always need to know what you're looking for but if you don't know the words or the the, the exact term um could we organize it in a different way and that's what we try to do with a prototype but um we have not the agricultural knowledge so we, we would need agriculturists to come in and say okay how do we organize information and how do we make it available and the extension officers were very interested in, in such an approach that helps them to find actually 
solutions to the problems that they they have without having to search all the net or having to know everything because that's just impossible as was mentioned earlier here as well oh, thank you tony thank you and, and, and we agree and you know like uh, you, you're mentioning something that is very important and, and it's also i mean we already mentioned that there is a lack of you know familiarity with digital tools in the extension offices that, that we know too and and we should work on that but you also mentioned something about you know how can we build repositories and all, all of that and that's precisely you know what uh, we we have the cgir platform right as, as 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 brian king said in the opening is also to make the data findable usable accessible and interoperable right um, we, we call it fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So this is what we're trying to do, and, and you, you're absolutely right. How we can make sure that these type of things get in the hands of our extension officers. And this is very important for the CGIR too, right? Because we, we're doing research for development, and as I said before, it's kind of our role, and we always more like we're well-placed in order to provide the, that solid science behind those tools, and also to show what, what are the, which tools are um, more responsible, right? And we, which, which tools are working best depending on, on a specific context. So thank you. Thank you for your insight. Hello? Somebody's online. Hi, you. you. Hello? Oh, sorry about that. Um, I had some problems with my mic earlier. No worries. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I think um, an extension agent today should have like, um, I think really good contextual knowledge of like the problems um, that are like priorities in the place they're working. So for example, um, in like Sri Lanka where I'm from, I know a big problem is that um, uh, farmers can't like get their fruits or their produce to market before they um, go bad. Or like but whereas in parts of Kenya I think they have like um, poor connectivity like for internet and phones so um, the issue there would be like how to implement like digital tools that would work around those problems so I think like contextual um, knowledge is pretty important Absolutely, there is not one size fits all. Uh, uh, I mean, that's that's absolutely right. I mean, uh, it's all site uh, specific driven uh, conditions. Okay. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that nobody is uh, has talked about extension agents being data collectors for CG researchers. I'm surprised too. I'm scrolling down and I see so many people responding. It's amazing. Um, and I see our Jamboard is getting pulled up, which is really nice too. Okay, Ana Maria says attitude is totally convinced about the opportunities in the rural world. We have um, from Brian, builds trust, communicates clear incentives, be a custodian of narrative. Oh, Andy says, Andy Jarvis says, all this conversation assumes a human extension agent. Aren't many extension agents going to be AI? So, Maria Camila, perhaps I can jump in there because I wanted to comment on Andy's uh, um, uh, comment, which I think that it's very interesting. And, and I think I'm just, I think that it's going to be a combination. Uh, but I'll go back to our experiences in terms of uh, farmers to farmers uh, learnings and how powerful they are when one farmer tells another one that he or she has been successful in implementing a specific practice and how does that really trigger action? So I, I'm just, uh, I think that for sure there's going to be a, a lot of innovation in terms of these extension services going into being digital, but I think that the human side, it's also going to continue being really relevant. What do you think, Johnny? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even even in the developed world, I mean, you know, say in you know, I don't know, say in, in Canada or in, in America, I mean, it's it's this this is going to happen. It has to be augmented technologies, right, with both humans and and actual uh, you know um, um, you know big data technologies. I agree. I agree. Totally agree with Anna Maria. Yeah, I mean, I remember that I was asked like uh, in early this year about you know what things won't change in the future, and and I'd say look. This interaction person to person, I mean, for some farmers, this is the way how we develop trust, right? So the fact that we're going probably to be much, much more efficient doesn't mean that we are not going to talk to them. I mean, as extension officer, I, I learned a lot from farmers too, right? So, so this is something that is, is, is going to happen. I am very happy that it's going to be that way, right? Great. great. Thanks, Ana Maria. Thanks, Ana. I mean, COVID-19 is a very good example. I mean, despite not having people, the farmers were looking for extension agents, right? I mean, in both Indonesia and in Colombia, right? I just want to say that all these inputs are really amazing. And I just wanted to um, recall that this isn't, this is not just um, going to end here because our next year topic is going to um, be much bigger than this. We're going to um, dig into this topic a little bit more next year with all your insights. It's going to be really amazing for us to continue this conversation for next year. So all these insights and all the um, what all you guys are writing down in the chat box will be considered um, for our next steps and for the extension agent of the future. Okay, we have a couple of minutes more. So um, we have 10 minutes left, right? We have like 10 minutes left or yeah, we have like 10 minutes left. Yes. Um, so we, we, says that community share knowledge, digital tools helps us to share lessons and preventing the same mistakes for other communities. Totally agree on that. Tony said um, related to the AI, I think AI can be an addition, but human to human connection cannot be replaced by AI. Because what I can do in those 10 minutes left is like probably, you know, people can write the insights they have and we have, we, we can have probably five minutes to questions, general questions, and then five minutes to wrap up, three minutes to wrap up. Is that okay? That's perfect. Can go right. Good. You're good. So keep writing and those who want to, to ask something to us and this community of practice, Go ahead. Go ahead. Any questions? Any questions you might have? Um, go right ahead, and we'll be hearing from you guys. How can we make older farmers to adopt the e extension service? Asks Innocent. Absolutely, that's a, that's a very good question, right? And and in fact, it's it's I, I in my mind, I was always thinking that farmers will never adopt. Uh, you know, digital technologies, they still rely on only uh, people. But I have seen in some uh, parts in Cambodia, for example, their own farmers who are more business oriented were actually using these digital tools. I was surprised at some of this. The survey will be on, right? We would want people to still continue filling the survey, right? Yeah, I can I can add the, the survey link, of course. So we actually spread this survey out um, a week ago, but um, we spread it out for, we left it in the chat box of our discussion room and also spread it out through our invitations and social media. But this is really important to, for us. So if you guys want to go ahead um, and answer this survey, that would be amazing. I'm just going to take the link and put it in the chat box. It will be extremely important for you to fill this uh, survey because then it will devise the work plan for the next year for this uh, for this uh, uh, community of practice. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Carlos Castellanos asks, what successful cases have you heard about examples about extensionists using digital tools and why were successful? Dorani, Daniel, do you guys want to answer that? Daniel, you want to go ahead first? 
sorry, Dari, go ahead. You you can go ahead. Yeah. So the 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 question exactly is. Uh, there's a question. Sorry. Yes. What successful cases have you heard about examples about ex extensionists using digital tools and why why were successful? I mean, there's 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 a whole bunch of things coming out from the CGI. Uh, from from CGI itself, right? I mean, um, a good example is, uh, is 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 Nuru, for example, the the, the mobile app, the one uh, which actually looks at uh, diagnosing diseases and which is actually finding more uh, widespread use in among farmers in East Africa and in India. Uh, there's many many tools that are that are, that are coming out. I'll actually give you a very interesting example of uh, of what happened in 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 Indonesia, right? Uh, and specific to COVID-19, the extension agents were, uh, so there is a private sector company that actually uh, has, uh, delivers extension uh, services. Uh, and they, they seem to have done much better because of the use of digital tools in this uh, lo lockdown uh, or, you know, like mobility restrictions compared to the traditional, uh, you know, uh, extension agents who are not using digital tools. So there's, there's, there, there is evidence and there are some reports about, about uh, showing these evidences as well, but you're right. I mean, over time, this is going to build and, you know, you know, the community of practice is going to help with that as well. Sure. And Maria Camila, you, you've been working also on the, this evidence of, of digital tools. So there are so many examples on that. I mean, I, I can talk from this community of practice. We've been promoting many of them, but there, there's also one de dedication to that. Uh, yeah. Maria Camila is part of it. Right. Next, next to this one, there is a state of... Um, evidence and we actually have a repository in the big data platform um, webpage and it's called um, food systems evidence clearinghouse so there we're trying to gather all impact of digital tools and so if you have a case um, any case and you want to submit um, that impact um, you can just go right ahead I can I'm also going to write down the link here um, so you guys can can see this too. But there's right next to this a session, and um, there's a session called the State of the Evidence. So if you guys want to listen to that one too, you're more than welcome to. So there's actually a bit, uh, there are a lot of uh, you know comments about or questions about you know what about places which have low low connectivity? You know how will how is digital extension going to help there? Uh, comments on that. I mean, with the rapid pace of, uh, uh, you know, the spread of mobile phones, even if you don't have 4G, 3G, 4G or 5G, for example, but just the phone itself can, can do a lot more um, uh, magic than we would imagine, right? Good, good. Look at the sketch. It's looking fantastic, right? We have a lot of things, yes, and that's yeah. really so, amazing. Just four minutes left. I'll start to wrap up, okay? Good. So first of all, thank you. Thank you all for attending uh, and, and thanks for participating also in the survey. So from the survey, we understood that in terms of knowledge, uh, ICTs, including analytics, is something that the person should know in the future, that he or she should consider actor moral, as I said before, as a facilitator of knowledge exchange as part of his or her attitude, and that definitely should develop some skills on food systems, value change, food loss and waste, nutrition, et cetera, as I said before. From, from the sketch, you know, which is, is not necessarily following the same line, is like uh, is more on, on multidisciplinarity uh, this was to take into consideration the socioeconomic context financial knowledge uh, we, we haven't thought about it but it's so relevant to get more familiar with the digital tools as i said as one of the bottlenecks as one of the barriers um, the cgir and, and its role right with as i said twice with science with um, playing this role as, as broker right in in terms of how responsible are those products um, and and i think but this is very important when, when we talk about uh, the human contact, right, the, the interaction. And we're still in this phase where a technician, extension officer, or facilitator should guide or translate the technology into actions in the field, right? It has been proven in some, uh, proven in some geographies that without human engagement, uh, farmers think that it's very hard to develop trust. So we will be still in a place in the future uh, where technician, extension officer, or facilitator should guide or translate the technology into actions in the field but not only suggesting the best practices, but probably make how to make them more actionable. Um, I mean, this is, and, and uh, the idea with this sketch is that uh, soon after, once we finish the, the webinar, we'll start to work with uh, Jose and knowledge management and communications uh, people in order to, to, to generate an infographic. 
and 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 with that, you know, we 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 want to say that we want to keep moving this for the keep moving forward this topic. So tell us what would you like to elaborate more on this next year. So this will be the topic of this community of practice next year. Uh, actually. Uh, I, I, when, when I invited some colleagues to, to participate in this webinar, there were some opportunities that came, came, came up, right? Like, for example, uh, with the developing local extension capacity project and the IFRI, uh, another CGI center, and that's precisely the idea with this COP, with this community of practice, right? To facilitate, to convene uh, collective action around one particular topic. So the topic of the next year would be this, and we already started to to plan some activities with other groups, which I think is fantastic, and that's, that's probably what we wanted to do. So with that, I think I, I, I really appreciate it. I'm very happy with this session. I mean, we took the risk to make it live, <laughs> and, and I'm so happy. I'm really, really happy. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you to Darani, Maria Camila, and Jose for all this guidance in terms of knowledge management and how to get this um, uh, session done. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. Good job, guys. Ciao, ciao.